representing uh, Oasia Hotel in downtown, our prototype for a tropical mixed-use skyscraper in Singapore that demonstrates a building can be different urban habitat beyond the ground level. That doesn't seem to work. Um, okay. it, um, it shows that the building can be urban infrastructure, an ecosystem that improves the quality of green greenery, community space, biodiversity in dense urban cities. We will take you through the building in a video first. Green spaces have been dis disappearing from our cities, and this has taken a big environmental toll. From worsening air conditions to human, the hu urban heat islands, which diminishing greenery to help absorb the heat and cool air. We, have also, we are also losing common spaces on the ground, and cities have become harsh concrete jungles. We need to rethink our buildings and cities. In our recent publication, Garden City, Mega City, we propose five parameters to quantify and measure our buildings. How much it increases greenery, how much it incorporates common spaces, the extent of connections and enjoyment, the provision, the contribution to ecosystem and biodiversity, and the provision of clean energy, water, and food. These are indexes we measure and benchmark our projects and to seek new ways to rethink buildings and cities. We see developments as building blocks with greenery and amenities that support and contribute to the overall urban environment. Buildings can be systematically planned as part of the master plan and urban design to reinvigorate the cities. By incorporating greenery beyond the ground plane, buildings can become biophilic environments that visually and emotionally engage the inhabitants and public. The green plot ratio is the amount of landscape services compared to the development site area. We need to rethink buildings as green habitats and ecosystems to restore biodiversity back to cities and to provide biophilic environments as a counterpoint to the dense concrete vertical jungle. The Ecosystem Contribution Index is the degree to which a development supplements a city's ecosystem. We need to explore buildings and as civic and friendly components of the cities, making seamless connections and providing common spaces instead of an inward-looking block occupying the entire site. 
the Civic Gener Generosity Index is the extent to which a development encourages and facilita facilitates the public life of a city. We last presented the Park Royal at Pickering here in 2015, and its net green area is the same as the adjacent city park, which is twice the site area. For that building, it achieved a plot ratio of over 200%, a common plot ratio of 150%, ecosystem contribution index of 80%, and a civic generosity of 100%. For Oasia Hotel Downtown, this pushes the boundary to even further. It achieves 1,100% 1, effectively compensating 10 other developments of equivalent size for the green replacement plot ratio. We know greening is vital to address the problems of urban heat islands and global warming. Greening can make buildings positive contributors to the urban environment. Greening can restore biodiversity and ecosystem back to the city. Oasia Hotel downtown is a demonstration of how buildings can green the cities. It is our prototype for a tropical high-rise urban habitat suited for the tropical climate with multiple breezeway atria, sheltered sky terraces, lush gardens, and vertical greenery. Wan Ling will do the next segment. This is the land, sorry. Right, this is the land sales site that Far East organization. This is the land sales site that Far East organization acquired in 2011. It measures 47 meters by 47 meters as part of the city grid and is bound on all four sides by roads. It is located at the fringe, right, you see that here, between the historic Chinatown Conservation District, the Central Business District, and the Housing District, which has several high-rise residential towers. It is one of the few green pockets that's left in this part of the city, and it shares a frontage with the future Civic Park. So this is the first, one of the first concept sketch that Woha presented to us way back in 2011. We were very bought over by the idea of the simplicity of the design, the idea of encapsulating the experience of a city within a garden and in a building. There will be sky gardens and vertical greenery. It will be a very unique con commercial building, very different from the glass buildings that we see in the business district today. I remember we were very, very excited when we first saw it. We wanted a mixed-use development to take advantage of the location of the site which is located at the fringe between the CBD and the historic Chinatown district. There are three main programs, the office, which we intended as strata units for sale, the hotel component, the club hotel in the building. Woha proposed to fit them into stacks of L-shaped blocks, flipped to opposite corners to orientate towards different parts of the city. The sky terraces have the same area as the building footprint, and they are inserted in between the programs so that we have four layers of grounds vertically instead of just one. The sky terraces are common spaces for amenities, pools and gardens so that our guests and occupants are never far from the greenery and open spaces. The space between the sky terraces form 20 to 30 meter tall internal breezeway atriums sheltered by the next terrace above. As a landmark building in a city, we wanted a distinctive urban form that fronts both the CBD and the Chinatown. We like Woha's idea of creating a lantern by covering the blocks and terraces with a filigree red envelope in expanded mesh. What makes the building even more special is its living skin. The envelope comprises of planters on every story behind the mesh. It is a living artwork of nature that changes with light and shade, with rainfall, and with the natural cycle of plant life. We know good design makes good business. In fact, the office units were all sold out within a day when it was first launched, and the hotel has been occupying, uh, is operating at high occupancy rates since it opened. It is a mixed-use building, and Woha convinced us that by locating the core in the center will cause congestion and conflict in operations. 
So what Wuhan did is that they put the cores to the four corners to create separate vertical circulation routes for each of the programs, as well as open up the floor plate for, at the sky terraces for use. At the cores at the corners, we can now have 360 degree paranormal views at the sky terraces, something that's totally not possible if we have a central core. We have three stacks of five to eight stories of L-shaped blocks for the office, hotel, and the hotel club. And these three programs overlook three separate atrium spaces. And there are four sky terraces with more than 6,000 square meter of decks, pools, and gardens. The facade itself comprises 25,000 square meters of mesh and 1,800 numbers of planters. It is a garden building right within the dense central business district. The vibrant colors of reds and greens stand out from the dark hues of the surrounding curtain wall towers. People walking or driving through the city are greeted by this tropical bouquet, like a breath of fresh air. The building is adjacent to the Heritage Chinatown district and the filigree facade with its color, pattern and texture relates very well to the fine scaled shop houses while projecting a contemporary image. This is an aerial view that captures the five, the layered approach of a skyscraper with its five stratum, the ground stratum, the office stratum, hotel stratum, the club stratum, and the roof. This is a ground stratum from the first to the fifth story. It comprises a drop-off, entrance, restaurant, above car parking, M and E and back of house spaces. We brought the facade down to the ground. The building takes root with greenery climbing up. It is important to us that the building's greenery can be enjoyed by both people on the street and the public from afar. The facade conceals the above car parking and services. The car park is naturally vent ventilated and day lit. And we have planters on every street that allows the creepers to cover the facade. This is the office stratum from the sixth to the eleventh story. With, and this is the first breezeway atrium. There are no dead ends in this floor plan, allowing cross ventilation to be effectively um, to be effective. The sky terrace on the sixth floor has informal meetings areas and working spaces and a pool deck and a 25 meters swimming pool, the first of the four swimming pools in this building. This is an events and networking space for the officers and its inhabitants to come together. The hotel stratum is from the 12th to the 20th story with the second breezeway atrium. A sky terrace has a feel on the 12th story, surrounded by pavilions with casual seating areas. This feel is like a village green and is sheltered from the sky terrace above. Guests check into this hotel, not on the ground level, not in the air conditioned space, but at this garden lobby, naturally ventilated and not air conditioned. The garden is stretched to the edges, giving the impression of the ground. The facade pulls apart as urban windows, opening the atrium to the city. The guest rooms either have direct city views or internal atrium views with the city as a backdrop. Instead of cold hard walls, the surrounding buildings now have views to the green walls, gardens, and pool. The club stratum, stratum is from the 21st to the 26th story with a third breezeway atrium. This sky terrace is an open oasis with club facilities, another swimming pool, decks, and cabanas. With the course tucked to the corners, the breezeway atrium opens the building up and frames the views of the city in a three-dimensional way. The rooftop stratum is on the 27th story. It is anchored by a restaurant and flanked on both sides with swimming pools and decks that is open to the sky. 
By tucking the M&E equipment and tanks to the sides and below the terrace, the roof terrace, we freed up 80% of the roof for program and amenity. This is a mixed-use building in a high density but with high amenity. By day, Singaporeans recognize the building as a green landmark now. And by night, the tower glows like a lantern beacon in the urban landscape. The expanded aluminum mesh panel is mixed in five shades of red to mimic the natural colors of flowers from budding, flowering, and withering. The mesh recedes in the back as the speckles of red and the green thicks over like flowers within a vertical foliage. The green not only softens the profile of the building, they provide a layered shielding and shading on top of the mesh, lowering temperatures by 10 to 15 degrees Celsius, surface temperature across the skin of the building. Overall, it has a green plot ratio, replacement plot ratio of 1,100%, which compensates for the lack of green replacement on 10 similar sites. There are more than 30 species of tree shrubs at the four sky terraces. They reinforce the uh, unique character of each terrace with shade, texture, and color. There are more than 20 species of climbers and creepers used on the facade based on the adaptability to, shade and to, shade, to sun and shade. The climbers create a continuous 200 meters tall green surface that connects the four terraces, create a vertical systems for insects and small animals like squirrels to climb and populate. Overall, we have more than 50 species within the buildings that provide natural resilience against bugs and diseases. All the facade, all plant, Planters are located behind the corner course on every floor with proper access walkways for easy maintenance without the need for rope access, specialized maintenance personnel or gondolas. They are very easy to maintain. All planters are watered by auto automatic irrigation system. At the terraces, all the trees are braced to the planters and to each other by stainless steel cables. This is one of our favorite image of the building. Like a tree, the tower breathes, metabolizes, and photosynthesizes. Like a tree, the tower protects and shelters, creating natural habitats and attracting biodiversity. Nature can coexist with buildings. We have seen the greenery attracting bees and birds, climbing animals like squirrels, some of which have made this place their habitat. We did a social survey and audit of the occupants, neighbors, and public. Out of the 60 guests, staff, residents, and public interview, more than 98% appreciates the green building. On social media, the design drew many positive comments. We have conducted a biodiversity audit and projection and it's interesting to note that the city has 10 numbers of if the city has 10 numbers of such a building it would create a sufficient mass to host the same number of urban adapted species in the neighboring Duxon Plain Park and in, in, the, in the middle of the slide if the city has 20 to 50 numbers of such buildings it will be able to host the same number of species found at the linear park and the neighborhood park spotted to park combined with Duxton Plain Park. If the city has a building that incorporates and value ecology and biodiversity, we can have cities that can coexist with nature. In summary, Oasia Hotel Downtown is a prototype that reimagines the tropical tower as a responsible, livable, and sustainable high-rise environment that contributes to the city. It sets a new achievement in integrating and maximizing outdoor spaces and greenery within high rises in the tropics. It demonstrates the coexistence of city and nature, engaging benefiting city dwellers both within the buildings and the neighborhood. We leave you with this time-lapse video showing how the green has taken over the building over a period of six months. We think tall buildings can be meaningful habitats beyond the ground plane. Oasia Hotel Downtown 
demonstrate that buildings can be important components in improving the quality of open space, community space, green space, biodiversity in cities. It sets a standard for private development's contribution to the common good to the people, the city and the climate. Buildings must create human and nature-centric environments that must be environmentally friendly, culturally appropriate, climatically sustainable, and the Oasia Hotel downtown offers a prototype for tropical high-rise urban habitat that is scalable, replicable in master planning and urban design. If cities were to, build, to have more buildings as such, we will have cities that are adaptable, resilient, and generous. Cities that show high density can be open, social, and green. Thank you. Thank you.